Most of the time during conferences, this is the time where we get to drink coffee and talk. For TED Talks especially, it's basically a time for me to tell you something in which I think is quite relevant. I used to be where you were, at the comfort of my living room, to cafes, to even more suspicious looking cafes, i.e. netcom, to catch a glimpse of my favorite TED Talk speakers. To me, TED Talk speakers provided a unique and cutting edge perspective on how they depict reality. And today, I'm deeply humbled to be the first speaker for TED Talks Gadong, and to basically talk about the way in which I see things in life. What you do and what I do might basically be the same thing, and that is that I have this innate and immense love for travel. What I do is that I travel and represent Brunei Darussalam in most instances as a national delegate, panel speaker, national representative, um, basically just to talk about Brunei, the environment, and young people. And usually I share these experiences with my friends and my family, and of course, social media. At the end of the day, what I believe now is what you might believe as well, that the world is a flat land where almost anything and everything is within our reach. I have a question. If I were to ask you where your clothes were from, shoes, your food, it must have not come from Brunei. I wouldn't get a made in Brunei comeback as quickly, um, such as, for example, if I were to talk about clothes, I get Zara or H&M or another brand that is easily well known to us. Takes me back to the eBay.com or Zalora.com part of my brain. Now, when I say this, I say this in a sense that we are very blessed in living a limited, not limited, but limitless life. If I take out my invisible phone right now and look at the Facebook timeline I have, I can see what my friends are doing from all around the world, what they're eating in Singapore or what they're doing in Shanghai for. And at the end of the day, I believe that we have to strive and find a common balance in being ourselves as Bruneian and also trying to showcase this st strong heritage we have to the world out there. Now, when I say this, I say it in the most tactful manner. And today, with my topic, Think Local, Act Global, it's basically a notion wherein by it comes hand in hand with country planning and thinking about the impacts we give to our environment. Think local, act global, basically is where we consider the impacts you bring to not only our surrounding environment locally, but, it, but its impacts on a global scale. When I say this, I say this in the most literal manner in my presentation. To me, to think local and to act local is to basically carry a set of values in which derive from one's cultural background. That is, to be as Bruneian as we possibly can and let that notion reverberate across borders. I believe that there are five simple steps in thinking local and acting global. First and foremost, it's the importance of impression. Now, when I say the importance of impression, it's not the impression that we leave at the end of a conversation, but the very first. How do we propel ourselves forward, and how is it that we propel our image to other people? What is it that makes us who we are? So, to address this, I came up with a little research and tried to, you know, scope down and figure out what it is that makes me Bruneian. Bruneians, in essence, are quite rare human subjects. There's only about 420,000 of us, and, well, we have a culture derived from the old Malay world of Malay origins. However, during the, the current uh, living times of Brunei right now, there's a lot of other ethnicities that come to play. Now, as a conference kid, usually what happens is when I'm away for one week, there's usually one night dedicated to a cultural exchange night. Basically a night where I get to dress up with my friends and we get to share a language and we get to share whatever it is that we have um, from our country. And at the end of the day, from great networking opportunities to downright awkward moments, it's quite a, quite a wondrous moment for me. Sometimes I get a lot of misconceptions as well. Um, some people think that I'm Middle Eastern because of my headscarf. 
Some people think that I'm so bloody rich that I have a gas station and gas pump at the end of my house, or at the back of my house. And then I think to myself, hmm, maybe you're right. Because at the end of the day, I like to think that Bruneians always dress prim and proper. And with the notion I have and what I carry, they could think that way too. And then at the end of the day, I think to myself, I must be, ga- I must be missing out on a gas pump at home. But what's important is that we have to address these allegations and deal with them in the most pragmatic manner, of course. Because at the end of the day, we ourselves may have assumptions of other cultures, races, and of course, whether we like it or not, this creates indifference, hate, and racism in the world today. This brings me to my second step, and that is to pick and to choose. There are 2,000... 796 languages in the world. Hello, assalamu alaikum, marhaba, konnichiwa, sawaside. A lot of other hellos that you can basically hear during a conference night, or let alone not a conference, be it at an airport while you're on transit trying to find a book or trying to find chips, or in my case, the bathroom. At the end of the day, I believe in trying to reach a common ground when I'm communicating with a person especially when that person is not familiar with the language that I speak. Now, I believe in doing this, but I believe in trying to retain my mother tongue, but yet try to learn other different languages for the sake of trying to communicate. What I need to say next is quite saddening for society, but this is, in essence, not prevalent. I need to ask people now, how many questions do you speak? Do you speak seven? Six? Maybe five? but I speak four, three, two, and probably your mother tongue. I speak four languages mainly because I've traveled around and I've learned quite a lot, but my main being is English. But put me in a situation where I'm talking to an old Bruneian man, I wouldn't want to instill what my friends do sometimes. I have friends who come fresh from UK who are graduates, and when they want to talk about food, they go, excuse me, sir, how much is this? And the confused man will tend to go, oh, apa tu, kita? what did you say? I tend to not want to limit conversations. And I think as a young person today, we should try to also relate to others that can't communicate with us in that common language. I believe it's quite important mainly because not only are you expanding the knowledge that you have, but you're also increasing your opportunities and not only just getting to know someone, uh, this is for the ladies and for the gentlemen, you can get numbers easily, but this doesn't limit your opportunity to just um, job, to gaining jobs, to getting employment, but to also increase your own knowledge about other countries and them knowing yours. And then what happens next is that number three, the third step. The third step, which is reflect. But before this, the quote before had said that Aristotle once said, it is the mark of the educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. To me, there's no certain point in time in which we have to reflect on what it is that we do or know. But at the end of the day, it's always important for us to be up to date with the cultures and trends around us. And when I say this, um, it came to me and it dawned to me Um, When I had my first reflection, when I was only about 13, I can imagine not only myself, but imagine yourself in those shoes, doughy-eyed, fresh-faced as a young person, and put in a different place of worship. Um, When I say different place of worship, I meant a Hindu temple, quite different from where I came from, because religious education as I knew it back then in a community high school was quite different. We learned various different um, religions from Hinduism, Buddhism, whichever you may, there's a lot of other things that we learned. But I fell in love with so many other cultures and I fell in love with Hinduism especially. I fell in love with the fact that um, there was a huge amount of respect, for example, when they walked into their temple and the tranquility that the temple possessed and there was a lot of things that I liked as well. But then at the end of the day, I thought to myself, there was one important thing that I had to do. I found that it was important for me to regularly check up on myself, on ourselves, whether we are up to par with the cultures and trends around us. I had to realize at that fact and point in time that I was Bruneian. I was not Hindu, I was not anything else. 
And then that my preference was meat. <laughs> Because my friend, who was Hindu at that time, did not consume any point of meat. But my in culture in Brunei especially took meat as well as staple during Hari Raya. It's important for us to do one thing as well. And that is to fall in love for a moment with the culture. But never forget where you come from. I had this amazing opportunity to go to Cambodia about two months ago. It was a very, very big conference of sorts. Um, a thousand people from 45 different countries. And well, we learned so much from the locals. From the very fact that they had to survive on minimum wage yet be so happy. They showed us their Khmer roots, their temples, their places, their culture, their attitudes. And I, for a moment, thought to myself, I love to be Cambodian. But at the end of the day, I believed to myself that there could not be any other better representative of my own culture but myself. And that, comes me t that brings me to my next point. And that is, despite our belief, we are first and foremost Bruneian at heart. When I say this, I say the fact that Bruneians, as you all know, and other cultures as well, are taught to be kind to the elderly, to the young, to balance ourselves between progress and play. And basically, this is what the root of all cultures and societies teach us. Hence, therefore, this brings me to my fourth step, and that is realizing the power, the innate power behind action. When I talk about action, I would like to bring you guys back to the initial definition of what Think Local, Act Global means. It's the ripple effect that is created by a single action. The great potentiality in this creates, and I hope you as well want to focus on the positives, but the positive actions that happen after we do these things. Now, I never really understood the mission of kindness until one day um, I had a gold watch. I say I had because I gave it to someone. I had a gold watch in my hand, and this watch, as it trends as it is now, is gold, and it was very pretty, River Island. But when I was in Cambodia, I thought to myself, I'd pass it on to someone else. I gave it to this really young woman. I think about in her mid-20s, she had a baby in her arm. And when I just put it on her wrist, she was so gracious and so thankful that I was so genuinely happy for the first time. Now, I know maybe a few of you in this room have, you know, donated. Donated clothes, maybe your shoes, maybe your time. And the power in which this creates is quite phenomenal. I thought to myself then, to think of the amount of, and to think of the amount of um, donations that are around, not only in my country, but around the world, from t-shirt to t-shirts to boxes and boxes of donated goods, food and water. There's a lot of significance a meal or a bottle can carry to people. And hence, therefore, I think to myself then that number four, kindness in itself is a global language that knows no words. And that's something that we as Bruneians need to realize at the end of the day. Number five, it's to be truthful to yourself. And when I say to be truthful to yourself, I say it in the most easiest and the most realistic manner possible. The way in which we address the realities or the problems that we have, we have to look at them quite generously and quite simply, simply as it is. And we face these problems as young Bruneians tend to be as energetic as they can. And at the end of the day, I believe that by understanding the realities we have to face as young people, propel us and put our best forward. Now, there's five steps in which you can take from my TED Talk to think local and to act global. And if you want to or may want to remember it as a five-step dating guide, it's sort of like that. Number one, just to repeat, it's the importance of impression. How do you put yourself forward to people? Number two, to pick and to choose, to pick and choose whichever cultural language that best suits you and do it your best way. Number three, to reflect on yourself and reflect on your current conditions. Number four, the power of action and realizing the great potential it carries. Number five, 
to be truthful to yourself. Now, I probably have a few minutes and we're still on coffee break. I've talked too much about myself. So my name is Hannah, and who are you? Thank you.